I can't believe it's been an entire year since I first started my channel here on YouTube. It's grown an incredible amount and it's really all thanks to each and every one of you who have stopped by, watched my videos, and commented. I really do appreciate it. Looking back at the last year, it's really surprised me just how much I've changed as a solo board gamer. Not only has my channel gone through changes, but also the types of games that I've played are going to be completely different this year, and it's really shocking when you put them side by side. I invite you all to join me as I go through my list of my favorite solo board games of 2022. The moment I looked at Familiar Tales, I knew immediately that I wanted it in my collection, especially when I found out that the creators of Mice and Mystics and Aftermath were behind this. I love these storybook adventures, and Familiar Tales does a great job when it comes to their characters, the voice acting, the colors, the art, the exploration. It's solid gameplay, and I really enjoy it. The only thing I don't like about it, it did away with the book, and in its place, you play in an app, but the music sometimes has a bug that comes in and out. But other than that, the deck building in this game, the resource management, the exploration, the characters, the scenarios, which go by really quick, and the way that the eras change depending on the choices and the actions you took in the previous era, really do elevate this experience. And it really feels like if a fairy tale is taking place on your very game table. It's really neat stuff. And if anything that I just said here interests you, I highly suggest that you check it out. I really enjoyed the Star Wars The Clone Wars Pandemic System game. Last year, I played World of Warcraft, and that was a great pandemic game. But this one blows it out of the water. The card play in this game, the villains, which each have their own different decks that make them act differently, really make this game the game changer, in my opinion. Now, I will let you know that this game is not an over-complex game. It's a very simple game, but it's a very good game. What this game does different is the way you're able to exhaust cards instead of just get rid of them to make something happen, you could reuse them as long as something in the game doesn't change that. The missions, although similar, are different enough to make each game feel completely different. The art, and once again, the card play in this game is completely top notch and it's what really ultimately elevates this game apart from the other pandemic games. Each villain even has a finale card that completely changes the way you play the end game. When it comes to the miniatures, I love the way they look. From the Jedi's and the Sith, they're all meticulously detailed. They look great. Even the droids make their little appearance and I really mean literal. They're awesome. The blockades look just the way you would expect them to look. Overall, Star Wars, the Clone Wars, the pandemic system is an absolute must if you're not yet tired of pandemic style board games. Role Player Adventures is a game that caught me completely by surprise. It arrived late last year, so it didn't quite make last year's list, but I'm so glad I'm able to talk about it now. Role Player Adventures is a fantasy role playing game in which you basically just roll dice and Using the cards in your hands, you manipulate the dice to complete skill checks or sometimes battle enemies. When it comes to the card play, it's really straightforward, easy to understand, but something about it is really fun, easy, and effective. The gameplay in this game is rock solid, and I enjoy it very, very much. It's a highlight of the game. As in any other role-playing game, as you level up your character, you become stronger and certain aspects of the game does become easier. But what really stands out for me anyways is the way the map brings the story to life. It actually is very reminiscent to the old point-and-click games like Sam and Max, Grim Fandango, and Escape from Monkey Island. 
I especially like the gameplay mechanic in which you can mix two different items together to create another completely different item. That's point and click adventures the way I used to know and love it. It's great. Once again, the story here, the leveling up system. Oh, one thing I do want to mention, when it comes to the side quest, it's very reminiscent of RPGs like The Witcher, for example, where you see all these little, little icons pop up. But you do need the expansion Nephrus' judgment to make it work. However, it is phenomenal and highly recommend it. This game is lengthy, meaty, and the whole entire thing fits inside the box, something that very few board games, unfortunately, can manage nowadays. If you're a fan of RPGs and you don't mind reading and using your imagination, I highly recommend you get your hands on Roleplayer Adventures. It's a great game. Scooby-Doo the Board Game is a game that tugged at my nostalgia and heartstrings. This game screams nostalgia unlike any board game I have ever played before, and I absolutely adore it. I love this game. Now, I do want to let you know something. This game, if you're not a fan of Scooby-Doo, I don't think it's going to be for you. However, if you're a fan of Scooby-Doo, and look at these amazing miniatures, this game is an absolute joy to have. I absolutely love this game. It's a simple game. It's not a difficult or complex game. Simplicity is the name of the game here. However, I love, I just love the look and feel of this game. As I mentioned earlier, it's basically you just going around the board, collecting resources to create traps to trap the monster and win the day. That's it. Super simple stuff here, but it looks great. I'm such a huge Scooby-Doo fan that it really did it for me. It's not the best game. I promise it's not, but it's a fun game. I also like that little touch that if you have the actual cover, you turn off the lights, it glows in the dark. And yes, it's a silly gimmick and it's a novelty, but I love it. Overall, if you're a fan of Scooby-Doo, do yourself a favor and check it out. Scooby-Doo the board game is great. Vagrant Song is another game that just came out of nowhere late last year, but I didn't get my hands on it until this year. And the moment I laid eyes on those beautiful acrylic standees, that art style called my name, and I knew I was in for an amazing experience. And I wasn't wrong, because this game is so much fun. It's a story-driven game in which you're going to be exploring the train and doing a whole bunch of different things when it comes to trying to bring life back to Haints or the ghost in this game. There's, there's a mechanic in here in which you keep rolling dice, and what I like about it is every time you roll a six, it's called exploding dice. You could just keep rolling the sixes, and it's just such a... When, when it's... When it's going in your in your favor, it really feels great. The way that the haints move, the way the characters move, the gameplay mechanics, the actions, all of it is so much fun. So exciting exploring and seeing what's going to happen next. And the scenarios just knock it out of the park. I loved every single moment that I spent playing Vagrant Song. And I think you will too. Now I know what you're thinking. It seems like I'm cheating because I added Star Wars Outer Rim. However, I'm going to be talking about the expansion that released this year, Unfinished Business. I hadn't played Outer Rim, and as soon as I heard that the expansion was going to release, I just held off on playing it until that expansion released. And I am so glad that I waited because this turned out to be one of the most Exci I mean, if you love Star Wars, if you love Star Wars and Star Wars lore, th this is your game. Stop looking for any other Star Wars game. Pick this game up. I promise you the lore in this game is going to have you screaming with excitement and joy. It's so much fun. It's a pick up and deliver game at, at its heart with amazing AI. But what's great about this, not only are the AI cards really fun and easy and quick to to resolve, you can actually add a second one and play with like if you're playing with three people. That is amazing stuff. I absolutely love loved Outer Rim, and I highly recommend that you play it with the expansion because not only does it double the size of the game, it adds ambitions and 
uh, core worlds, which completely changes the way you travel on the game board itself. It's really great stuff. Mixed in with the art, the lore, this is a must play for any solo board gamer. Highly recommend it. I'm going to go out on the limb here and say that I think Ascension Tactics is one of the most overlooked game of 2022. This game mixes deck building along with area control, tactics, all in a way that just feels so phenomenally good and addicting. This game rocks. It is so well, well done, so well thought out. All the mechanics just work amazing. I love the, the, the constructs in this game. The constructs are a highlight of this game and make this area control deck building tactical game an absolute must buy and must play. Get it. Burn Cycle is hands down the most complex game on this list. It's from the makers of Too Many Bones and if you've played Too Many Bones, you know exactly what I'm talking about. However, this game is the closest I have ever gotten to feel as if I'm playing Metal Gear Solid in board game form. Using stealth to make my way through all the different floors and missions that this game has to offer is has been one of the most exciting and exhilarating moments in my board gaming time this year. I love the way that the floors are laid out, the missions are laid out, the way you have to avoid the different security guards and how you open doors and unlock them with the key cards. I mean, this is amazing stuff here. I absolutely enjoy this game. I don't know if I like it more than Too Many Bones. In my opinion, I like it about as much for different reasons. It's hard to explain what this game is, but Burn Cycle is a standout board game experience of 2022. Dice Throne Adventures is a dungeon crawling, boss battling dice chucker that finally turned Dice Throne into a cooperative and true solo game and I couldn't be happier. Now I'm going to be very vague about this game because I'm going to leave a lot uh, for the future review. However, I will say that this has been one of the most enjoyable games I have played in 2022. I will say that it's a game that I've also played with my wife, one of the few games that she's played with me, but she loves it. And I highly recommend that you give this dungeon crawling boss battler a a try because it is sublime one of my favorite experiences of 2022 if it wasn't for final girl not only was it the last game that i played in 2022 it was hands down the best game that i played in 2022 this game resonated with me down to the core this card management horror game is phenomenal. I love absolutely everything about it. It is brutal. It is difficult. You're going to pull your hair out in frustration at times. But let me tell you, this, is, th this game is one of the most exhilarating games I've played in a long time. And it gives me that just one more feel constantly. It makes me want to play so many games in a row that time just flies by. And before I know it, it's really, really late hours in the night. If you're a fan of horror flicks, if you're a fan of solo board gaming, which is why you're here, do yourself a favor and get your hands on Final Girl. Now, there is one caveat. You need to get pretty much everything for it to really enjoy it. But you could get it little by little and you could find a lot of these packs for less than 20 bucks and I highly recommend it. The more you get, the more enjoyment you're going to get from this game. But Final Girl, hands down, in my opinion, has been the best game of 2022 and an absolute must own. I really hope you enjoyed watching this top 10 solo board games of 2022 as much as I enjoyed making it. To be honest with you, this channel is what it is because of each and every one of you all. And I really do appreciate you taking your time to stop by 
and hang out with me. But if you don't mind, I want to take this time to give a shout out to some channels that actually mean something to me because I really use them and appreciate them a lot. I like what they do. The first channel I want to bring to your attention is Board Game Rants. This is a guy that just is so enthusiastic about board games. I think just about as much as I am. He's just a, a huge fan of board games and it absolutely shows. Fun fact, Board Game Rants made a video a while ago talking about how easy it is to make your own board game channel and videos. And it's really because of that channel that sparked the interest in me creating Solo Board Gaming Night. And I think that's kind of cool because as a community, we can sometimes inspire one another and sometimes we don't even notice. Till this day, I'm really grateful I ran into your channel, BGR, and I watched that video. So everybody else, check out Board Gaming Rants. He's got an awesome channel and I really think you'll enjoy it. Maurice Andrews Jr., he's my go-to whenever it comes to anything Marvel Champion. I mean, this guy, you want to know about Marvel Champions? Go to his channel and you'll get it. I love it. Not only that, he does regular reviews as well. I just like his, his way of just having this conversation with the camera and it feels like you're in the room with him. Check his channel out, support him. He's a great guy and has an amazing channel. With that said and done, I just want to say thank you so very much for spending time with me. I really do appreciate it. This was Solo Board Gaming Night. I hope you and everyone else has a great game night. Take care.